Have you heard of VFR flight following and even been told you should be doing it but really don't know where to start? In this video, I'll not only outline how to get and fly VFR flight following, but why you're being told it's a good idea. Come fly and learn with us. Welcome aviators, my name is Chris Palmer, founder and master CFI at angleofattack.com, based here in Alaska. I'm excited about this topic today because VFR flight following is one of the most underutilized tools in all of aviation. In a few moments, we're going to jump in the airplane where I'll teach you the process of getting and flying with VFR flight following with real world ATC. This is just a regular day, me flying somewhere, and it was all on the fly. But first I wanna go over a quick overview of why we would want to have VFR flight following, then give you a quick overview of how to actually get VFR flight following. Then there'll be a few tidbits in between as some things happen as we're flying in the real world. First, the why behind VFR flight following. It's actually pretty simple. It all boils down to safety. So. With ATC watching us, basically them being our eyes in the sky, they'll have this little blip on their radar and they can help us with traffic alerts that we don't see. Of course, we have other tools that help with that, but they can also help with weather and they can even help in an emergency when we immediately need someone there to talk to you. So having someone right there already in communication, that can just help kind of build our team and have someone to talk to in case of an emergency. So there's lots of reasons, but it's just a, a great safety increase when you get VFR flight following. Not only that, it helps you practice ATC communications with the actual controllers that do IFR communications. So next, the how. And this is real simple. We'll do most of this in the airplane. First, you find the frequency for the controller in your area. It's gonna be probably center approach or departure. You dial in and you listen on the frequency before you talk because sometimes they're too busy and you don't want to butt in. Call up with your full tail number and a VFR request. Tell them you're requesting VFR flight following. Include where you are and where you're going. Then you'll be given a squat code that you put in your transponder. They'll make radar contact and verify your position. And now you have VFR flight following services. Let's jump in the airplane on this real world example and see it live and in action. Okay folks, we are uh, here in the cockpit now and I'm gonna show you guys how to do flight following. Now, flight following is something that I think is extremely useful. I've already talked about that. So I'm gonna go through the steps to show you that now and then hopefully throughout the flight you can get some little tidbits on actual traffic no, calls, no, 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 things like that. So the first step is I use ForeFlight to have a look at what the um, center frequency is or whatever frequency you need for flight following. It could even be a local approach that you'd be working with. So in this case, I have the map up here and you're gonna look for, um, first off, the navigation tab, the aeronautical tab here at the top gonna to want to look for that and have that enabled because then it gives you these frequencies here on the charts now of course if I start to zoom in now that'll change but that's Anchorage Center and it's on 125.7 and you can see those just about anywhere if I go down here near Homer where I'm from you can see this one down here as well okay so that's where you find the frequencies you can also find them in the airports view uh, which is also helpful so you know your local airport whatever your nearest you go to the frequencies and find uh, your information there so not wouldn't be flight service but center so it says 25.9 for Homer but I know that they usually switch me over right here so some of that local knowledge can help you as well all right so now I am going to dial in 25.7 and I'm going to switch that frequency over Okay, we can already hear other people talking on that frequency. Cleared at direct 
So next, before we call up, it doesn't sound like they're too busy. We want to get an idea of how far we are from a navigational aid or a larger airport. By large, I mean, you know, something that's within a Class E airspace. So right now, I'm just going to measure to Homer and see how far we are away. 15 miles to the um, northwest. Okay. So 15 to the northwest is what I can call when I call them up. You want your position, you want your altitude, and uh, you'll see that process. So what I'll do here in a moment is I'll call up Anchorage. I will request a VFR flight following, and then we'll have a little bit of a back and forth. And so I'll explain that as we go through here. So let me do that call now. Let me call up Anchorage Center. Anchorage Center, Skyhawk November 2423 Uniform. 2423 Uniform, Anchorage Center. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? Good afternoon. I'd like to get flight following uh, from Homer up to Kenai. I'm about 15 to the northwest of the Homer VOR. 3,500. Number 2423 Uniform, Squawk 1345, Homer altimeter 2962. 1345, 2423 Uniform. So I told him where I was, I told him my altitude, told him what I wanted to do, and he came back with a squat code. That's a, a unique code that he can tag for our airplane. So now I'll be on his, uh, his scope, if you will. So he's going to come back and tell me radar contact. Kenai, 2423 Uniform. 23 Uniform, thanks. Thank you. That's it. Is this going to be on YouTube? Yeah. That's funny. So uh, now he's told me radar contact. And uh, so he sees me. So now some of the services we can get. He can give me traffic alerts. It is someone to talk to in case of an emergency. Um, if we were doing anything with uh, instrument approaches or anything, uh, we could requ tango, tango, request those with information. With air traffic control, and just any number of other things that uh, that you can get from those services. So, honestly, the way I see this is, it just gives you an extra pair of eyes in the sky or someone on your team that can help you with whatever you need. So, personally, even though I have ADSB and I'm getting good traffic here on the iPad and on all my other instruments. It still doesn't mean that we see everything out there. And so I, I really like to have another person to look out for me because they have certain algorithms in their computers that say uh, if there's a traffic um, alert or anything like that. Of course, we got a lot of these tools here. That is great, but it's nice to have an extra layer that we can work with. So that is flight following. I want to let the flight continue now and hopefully we get those services pop up once again and we can see if there's uh, anything they want to talk to us about. Um, one thing I didn't mention is that they can also give you weather reports and things that they're giving other pilots. They'll talk to other, they'll talk to pilots about um, like severe weather, like thunderstorms and, and rain and things like that that are in their way. So it's just a point of contact to that system that is being used by IFR traffic for the uh, national airspace system. All right, so hopefully we'll get some radio calls on the way now. Are you enjoying this video and want to learn more? We have an entire library of structured videos on angleofattack.com. We call this Online Ground School and it's how you'll ace the written test required by the FAA. It's go at your own pace and all accessible right now on any device. Go check it out yourself or recommend it to your friends. Now back to the video. So any minute here is going to end our flight following for this flight. Uh, not too much traffic out here, so we didn't get too many alerts. Um, I did see some a little bit of traffic out there, but not too much. And the next and last thing they're going to do is they're going to hand us off to Kenai and terminate our radar services. So you'll hear that in a few minutes as we get closer to Kenai, where I'm flying, where it makes sense for them to have us go over to that, uh, that tower. So. You guys will see that, and that'll be the end of flight following. We'll squawk VFR, and, and that'll kind of polish it up. So uh, stay tuned for that, and then we'll talk a little bit more after in the studio.
So they haven't switched me over, and I'm getting real close, so I'm going to call them. They're not answering, so I might have to steer clear of the airspace. I have to be cleared. Anchorage Center, Skyhawk 2423 Uniform, looking for switch over to Kenai Tower. Skyhawk 2423 Uniform, uh, you can fog the apart, contact Kenai Tower 121.3. 23 Uniform, thanks. Nice little stiff crosswind. Well, it's not that stiff, but nice and steady. Okay, here we go. Touching down all nice and soft like. Okay, right on center line. A little bit of aileron into the wind. Thanks for coming along on this flight. I hope you learned a thing or two about VFR flight following. I'd love to hear what nugget of information helped you, so go ahead and comment down below and let us know. Also, make sure to like this video if you liked it and learned something. Make sure to subscribe so you can stick around and hit all notifications so you don't miss another flight training video. It's been a pleasure teaching you today. Fly safe, and until next time, throttle on. <laughs>